Hi you guys, uh, so thanks for sending me all the photo reference and I'm going to go through it really quick here. Now, I'm not going to go through more photo reference after this point. Um, like Tiffany, your reference actually just came in a few seconds ago as I was getting ready to do this. So um, what I'm going to trust is I'm going to trust that you guys can take a look at these examples that I'm showing you from different students in all three classes. And by the end of this, you should have an idea of what you're looking for and what makes reference look good and usable and what makes reference hard to work with. So with that in mind, um, let me go through these. Okay, with these, I, I want to point something out here. On the one hand, this isn't sunlight. On the other hand, it's dappled sunlight where the sun is coming through the trees. So like all this kind of stuff where you're seeing these these shadows kind of going across the the bunny. Um, and you know, and it's like you're seeing all this patterning from the tree branches. You need to get it into direct sunlight. Uh, actually, things like this back here, that's great reference. <laughs> uh, so if you're drawing a bush, you're in good shape. Uh, drawing this bunny, not so much. Um, same thing with this bunny. This bunny isn't in direct sunlight, so that so if you take a look, there's there's really no good shadows underneath it. Nothing like that. Uh, normally, in in good lighting, you'd have a shadow coming across this ear, you know, something like that. Um, so there isn't any of that. So you need to get better sunlight reference. Okay, I want to. One, a couple of things about this, Rachel. Some of these slides that you sent are really, really nice. Um, some really great examples of lighting. In this case, you know, what's looking good? What's looking good is all these areas in the wing. Now, uh, these areas here too. Now, you're, you are having a couple problems with this slide. Like what? Things are getting out of focus. Okay, you got to really watch that. These out of focus areas are not usable. Okay. Um, the other thing I want you to be careful about is, Rachel, I can't remember your sketch exactly, but you should be trying to shoot your photo reference at exactly the angle that you plan on using. And based upon the fact that your dragonfly was at all these different angles, I wonder whether, I started wondering which one you were going to use or how you were going to use them because you really can't mix and match that well. Uh, you kind of need to have the angle that you need. You know, so like this one is at a different angle. Again, the the exposure is really good in this area um, but then in these other areas not so much uh, this one also same thing a little bit although again this one is starting to get a little bit out of focus here and your focus ended up here now this brings up an interesting point about photo reference for all of you guys I know in this day and age of digital cameras a lot of you guys are probably using you know instamatics or relatively uh, uncomplicated point-and-click cameras. The only problem with that, the reason it's still worthwhile to get a, if you're going to be a professional at this, the reason you may want to get a nice camera, uh, and by that I mean a single lens reflex camera with true lenses on them, uh, detachable lenses like a, you know, what you think of when you think of a fancy camera. Um, the reason you may want to get that is because it does allow you a lot more control over things like depth and field. Depth of field, you can control that with a fancy camera in a way that most point-and-click cameras don't allow you to. This one is really nice. This is an excellent, excellent, excellent shot. Um, when you take a look at this, you can see all the little lights as they're reflecting off of these things. You see this really clear light. Now this is technically indirect light because the light's coming from this angle, but the light is really modeling the form of these little tiny highlights, these little tiny highlights right here on the uh, wing, um, just really nice lighting overall. This one's an excellent shot, and that would almost draw itself. Um, another excellent shot, but again, you know, since it's not showing the whole thing, I question how worthwhile this one is. Um, this one, excellent shot of the wings, but again, we're having focus issues out here that you should be trying to avoid. Uh, this middle area in here is really that's exactly what you want from reference in terms of like look at how the, the light in here is bouncing off of all these little facets that's really beautiful stuff um, but again unless you're gonna have exactly this pose that's not very useful to you so you want to have that kind of quality but at the pose that you need uh, same thing with this one some great resolution and everything um, it's actually a great reference for this felt. 
because uh, <laughs> it's revealing the form. This one isn't that good. Um, it shows some stuff. It show it's actually uh, it, it's it's kind of just mediocre reference. A lot of it's out of focus. A lot of it is blurry. Uh, this one's pretty good. This one's pretty good. In particular, look at how well this is described in here. You know, you're seeing all this nice little texture and all these little nuances. You're seeing the, these little textures here on the wing. That's beautiful stuff. That's exactly what you want. Now, the question is, can you get that over more of the picture? Can you get a full frame image like that? Uh, this one, it's okay, but it's not so good. It really needs a darker background. Also, take, start looking at clues like this. Notice that we have light on this side, but we also have light on this side. So we kind of have a couple different light sources going on here from different areas. You need to be careful of that. Sometimes that can make it hard to render the form. Nice reference, but not as good as the other ones. Um, not bad, but a little bit blurry. This one's a good shot. This one's a really good shot. If you take a look at this, what, what I want you guys to get used to looking for is things like this. Look at how that lighting is describing the form. How you have a light plane, a middle tone plane, a shadow plane. You have these the light catching these little highlights on the texture. So there's a lot of very, very, very nice description. Now, by contrast, just to show you guys the difference, this area here really isn't very revealing. It's it, that would be a difficult area to render. It's not that you couldn't use this, but that as an as a comparison, that's not so good. This area in here is really nice. It's exactly what you need um, in terms of the lighting. That one shows it a little bit better. I think part of the problem is that these things are no longer living, and so there's a little bit of deterioration. It looks like. Um, but again, the previous one was slightly better. That one's also a very nice one. Really nice, really nice description of the body here. Um, this area, again, though, a little bit out of focus, hard to see. You, the thing that you need to realize is when you're rendering from objects, one of the reasons you want the photographs to be so impeccable um, is because you can always take information out artistically. But if you have an area like this down here, the information isn't there to begin with. You can't add it back in very well. Um, it's very difficult to do that. So you always want to have an area like this top area because it's giving you something to work with and if you decide to knock out some areas or to eliminate some detail artistically or not, uh, that's something you can do. Okay, I, um, Natalia, I think these are yours if I remember correctly. I, I feel for you here. I don't know, this is an example of Photographers making great pictures that make for lous that make for not so good reference. I wouldn't say lousy reference. In this one, the 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 lighting on the hair is pretty good, but if you take a look where the lighting's coming from, the lighting is coming from directly above. And it's kind of it's probably like directly over the photographer in the sky. And so what you're having is you have no shadows at all, really, on this part of the body. You have a little bit of a shadow here, and you have a little bit of a shadow here. And that's really all you have. You don't have any shadows on the brow revealing the structure of the form. Um, you know, it's it's just it's very difficult because the, all the shadows are on the back side of this lion, which is not really where we want them. And the same thing is going on with these. I don't know. This one, it's a little bit better. The lighting is coming from the side. You can tell that because you're getting some shadows here, but you're not really getting any shadow. I mean, except for this little bit right here you're not really getting any shadow to speak of on the side of the face except this little shadow on the cheek. So this, what's happening is this side of the face, you would normally want to have a little bit more shadow on there. Again, this is something where the, where the light was probably coming from above the photographer's left shoulder. And so most of the lion looking at him is in the light and it doesn't it, he isn't revealed very well. Now by contrast, look at what this little shadow down here does. This little shadow rounds off that whole part of the form, so that's kind of what you're looking for. This one is like the most extreme example of this. They, the, basically, the lines are looking at a sunset behind the photographer, so the photographer might as well have used a highly powerful flash. Um, you really have you know, no shadows at all to speak of except for this little bit here, 
and this little bit here. Now this little bit is excellent. Now if we could just get that over the rest of the body would be great. But again, the lighting's really, they're staring right into the light. Uh, these are Stella's, I think. Stella, uh, this is a really nice effort consider considering you were shooting outdoors. If you would have shot this shot in the sunlight, I think you would have had a beautiful, beautiful shot. Because you're getting good lighting on all of these things, but again, it's a little bit blurry. It's a little bit hard to see the texture. This area definitely is getting blurry out here. Um, in certain areas, you're seeing some nice texture, but part of it is you're in somewhat low light conditions compared to sunlight, so it's not quite revealing. But the what I want you to notice about this one is the lighting is describing the form of those tentacles. This one isn't bad. This one isn't bad. You're getting quite a bit of fill light. This is actually the one case where I would have you guys using Photoshop because what's happening is the photograph is exposing for this area, making that area look good. By doing that, this area here is completely blowing out and you're losing all sense of texture and information in here which is you know an area where you want to have some information um, so that's a that's has to do with how the camera meters uh, to some again this is why you you know learning photography is still a relevant skill in this in this day and age because the cameras can do a lot but they're not very smart and they don't know what you want now having said that for the most part this reference in here for the head is pretty good and if that's the part you're using you might be able to get away with that um, again interesting lighting um, it'd be better in sunlight though uh, you can kind of it's starting to describe it but sunlight would give you an even clearer picture of that if you could do it now this one there's a couple things I really like about this one the kind of information you're getting in here is the kind of information I think you would have gotten in all of these slides had they been shot in sunlight. So um, that's kind of what you're after is that kind of resolution where you can actually see the character of the highlight and yet you can see the character of the form as well. Again, watch these areas like, like this. Those areas are unusable. Um, areas like this, they're borderline. You know, you can see what kind of lighting it is and it's a little distracting. But this area right, right down here, this first area, um, that, that one's pretty good. Again, really nice in the middle here. This part right here is exactly what you're looking for, but you want to get it across the entire image. So areas like this where, where the white balance is getting blown out, or areas like this where it's getting blurry, uh, you can't really use that very well. Areas like this are blurry, but this area here in the middle is exactly what you're looking for in reference. This is a pretty nice shot. You're still getting a little bit of an overexposure on areas like this, but that's pretty minimal. You can actually correct for that a little bit in Photoshop um, using, I can't remember the, uh, I, I want to say it's shadow balance or light shadow balance. There's, there's a command that you can use that will kind of somewhat correct for this. But for the most part, as a head, this is pretty usable. Um, you're getting pretty good description up here. There are some better examples, but again, watch for areas like this where you can tell that the photograph is overexposing in the light. All right, now this one I really want to, I want you guys to pay attention to. Take a look at these leaves. That's precisely what you want in reference. Those leaves would be so easy to draw, so easy to render, and they would look so good because the lighting is describing the form. Okay, so, so pay careful attention. You want this kind of texture, this kind of information. This entire plant actually really beautifully lit. Beautiful reference. Now this one by contrast is the same plant, but take a look at the difference. This plant, if you render it, is not going to come out very good because the lighting isn't as good you haven't described the form with the lighting. In this case the, the the leaves are really well described and they give your eyes the correct clues so that when you render those clues it'll look like a brilliant leaf. Um, these they're okay but you're kind of losing some resolution. If you were to block this off and see just that you wouldn't know what the hell you were looking at. Uh, it might be algae for all you know. Um, and then and again here you've got some overexposed areas. I know you're not going to be using these, but just as an example. Uh, and watch, you know, things like focus. 
So you can see why this is so frustrating. Uh, now with the moon here, this moon is looking pretty good. I mean, the, the good thing about the moon is you've got great lighting. Now I want to show you guys something though. Um, these moon photographs, you're stuck. You can't go to the moon and shoot your own reference uh, very easily. But I want to point something out to you just because this happens to be here. First of all, these, this reference is okay because it has a good and light dark pattern. But also, look in particular at this bottom edge here where you get this raking light, where the light is raking across the surface of the moon. That area is actually how you want to light a form to reveal its texture. Light it from the side. You get great revealing light. Now again, um, you know, Connie, this is one that you'll, you're, you're going to be okay going with this because everyone knows what this is. Everyone knows this pattern. Uh, so you're all right, and it does have enough, because of the darker areas of the moon, you have enough of a light and dark pattern. It's not technically light and shadow, but it will work. Same thing with this one. Okay, now this one, unfortunately, you can't obviously take a T-Rex skeleton outside, or you can't take it for a walk. Um, so what's challenging about this is you basically would have to take this and use your knowledge of lighting to fake it. That's a challenge. Um, it's, it kind of adds a step to the process. I can show you guys on um, on Tuesday maybe I can show Monday or Tuesday I can show you how to do this. Basically, what you would do is you would do an extra layer where you'd like lay a piece of tracing paper over your photo reference and play with adding shadows to it where you think they would belong. Um, it adds an additional step, but I would do that as an intermediate step before trying to use this reference. And what I mean by that is you might be saying, okay, well, where do I want the light coming from? Well, okay, well, I want the light, let's say, coming from over here. So will this be in the light? Yes. Will this be catching a highlight? Yes, because it's perpendicular to the light. Will this area here be in shadow? Yes. And so I would go in, and on the piece of tracing paper, I would, I would do the light and shade how I think it would work and do that you know as a series of studies until I feel confident about how I'm going to do it so things like this again if the lighting's coming from up here you know I might say okay well I'd have a core shadow going along here and I'd put some hatching here to kind of you know create a kind of turn of the form now the problem is you have to know quite a bit about lighting to pull this off well but if that's what you gotta do that's how you learn about lighting so anyway, uh, you'd have to kind of fake the light and shade. This one, you know, it's a, it's a nice detail shot. I'm not sure how useful it'll be to you. But, um, you know, the other thing is, notice how the lighting is directly in front of it, or is directly behind the photographer. So we're getting all these highlights going across here. Um, that makes it less useful than we would like. Again, this one, it looks like it was taken with a flash. And I say that because there's all these little hot highlights here. You want to avoid that because these flash photographs, they basically act just like having the sun directly behind you. All those shadows are on the far side of the object, which is exactly where you don't want them to be. So this one isn't very usable. Also, notice areas like this. Areas like this, if you, separate, if you isolated them, they're junk. You can't tell anything of what's going on in there. So that's what I want you to look for as, as areas that are not helpful to you in your reference. Same thing, this one looks like a flash photograph. It may not be, but it, it has the feel of a flash photograph, and, and as such, it's really not very useful. This one, same thing as the previous. Hey, Lee, I think that lady's flipping you off. Just kidding. Anyway, being stupid. So, yeah, some of these are pretty good. Like, this one actually gives you pretty good form, and it gives you enough light and shade that you can kind of work with it a little bit. This is a pretty good T-Rex head. Um, it's not very good on the rest of this. You'd still want to make up the lighting a little bit, but that's a good start. Okay, uh, I think these are ons. Okay, on you had some good reference in in here. This one is not one of the best ones, just because if you squint down at it, it's a little bit hard to tell like where this, where the where the jaw ends and the chest begins, things like that. It's not very revealing. Some of these other ones are pretty good. This one is a pretty good head, 
But again, these areas here are overexposed. You're losing all your textures. What you want to see is something more like this. This area is still overexposed here, but if you look at this area, you can see a little bit of texture. Or if you look in here, you can see where it's black, but you can still see some, some surface te texture there. This one's pretty good. This one's pretty good. You've got good. You've got some good light and shade describing the form here. You've got some shade here. You've got some shade, you know, on the ear here. You know, the plane of the face is revealing itself. This one's excellent. If you guys take a look at this area, look at the sides of this cow here, and how you can really see all this texture. All of the, now the background, again, start noticing things like this. The background is totally overexposed. But if you look at the textures that you can see on this cow, you can really see the anatomy. Um, you, you can see the textures. It's just, it's, this one's excellent, excellent lighting on that cow. That's one that would work very well. Uh, this is a pretty good cow head, except again for the overexposure of the white areas. You might be able to correct those in Photoshop with the shadow highlight tool and the image adjustment to try and see if there's anything there at all. But that that's an example of what you get when your camera isn't quite up to the task. Um, I'll ask me and I'll also explain a little bit about high dynamic range photography. I wouldn't recommend you guys mess around with that for this kind of thing, but I'll explain it in principle to you. These aren't bad. This middle head and the this this head in the middle here is is really quite well lit, uh, so that's pretty good. All right, this one again for all the reasons we've talked about really isn't that usable. You've got the profile of the bug, but you have no real light and shade on it. Same thing with this one. It's blurry. We can't really see much. What okay? Um, these have decent textures, but they're not well lit. And let me show you an example. I think it's on the next slide. What's really ironic is here you've got all this great information, but here's your sunlight. If you were to shoot this the same wing about two feet to the to the left, you would have had great reference. Um, but your lighting isn't really falling on the wing itself. Um, these things again, you got to watch this kind of stuff. You've got some areas that are out of focus up here. That's not really going to do you any favors. Uh, same thing with this one, out of focus. Your focus ended up down here. Um, so do learn how to control your focus on your cameras. Even if it's a point and click, usually there's a way to do it. Um, what? I, okay, this is kind of cruel, but I wanted to point out to you guys, this is beautiful, beautiful reference for an X-Acto knife. Um, <laughs> this up here, it's okay, but again, it's blurry. It's not really all that revealing. But your X-Acto knife lighting down here is exquisite. It's exactly what you need. Same thing on this one. This X-Acto knife is beautiful. I wish you were rendering that. Now this one is is uh, better because the thing's in focus and you can see a little bit of the lighting. But again, it's a little bit, um, it gives you the form, but that's about it. You're, you're going to have your work cut out for you, no pun intended, um, just by trying to apply that to the wasp. Um, it's a challenge. You know, I would do a couple of tracing papers. It's really going to be a lot of work to get that to work well. This one is your best one as far as the form is concerned. Um, again, you can start to see the textures. And here we can start to see a suggestion of the lighting on the form. You can see these edges. This is why you do this kind of model making. You can see that you've got a thin radius here. You've got a broader radius here. You've got some rim lighting here. So that's kind of why you do these things, because you would never invent it that richly out of your head. This one, again, it's out of focus. All right, now this one's kind of funny. Um, the lighting back here is pretty good. <laughs> no, but it's out of focus. This one, it, it doesn't have any direct light on that harp seal, so the lighting isn't very good. I mean, it shows us that it is indeed a harp seal, but if you were to render that, it would be very unsuccessful because it's just simply... It's far, if you squint at it, the whole thing vanishes. Uh, you don't want that to happen. This is great reference for the pattern and for the object, but not so much for the lighting of the object. 
Um, it's a wonderful photograph, but again, it could use better light and shade. It's in there, but it was an overcast day, and so you're not really getting strong shadows on it. All right, now this one I've got, uh, this one's Skylar's, I believe. Skylar, I, I want you to notice something about this. Notice the lighting on this, and then notice the lighting on the can. The can is lit, so you have the light coming from the side and casting a shadow that way. You know, and so all of this is really nicely described. You've got these really descriptive light shapes and shadow shapes. You know, all of that's perfect. But this is at a different angle. Now the light's coming this way. You know, and so you can't, and now you've got good lighting on this, but this is the area you were looking for, and you can't really use it. Also, one other thing about your prop, this is peeled back a little too neatly, I think. I think based on your thing you might want to be more artful about how you're going to peel it back but at the very least put them in the exact same lighting so they light the same way and they'll make sense when you put them together okay same thing with this one if you take a look at this if you have this kind of lighting on the can you need to have the same kind of lighting on the skeleton and the skeleton lighting is coming from dead in front this is coming in dead from the side no pun intended again um, but you need to have the same lighting on each if you're going to make them work work well together. This one has very flat lighting also. It's not very revealing of the form. Uh, you might want to borrow one of the skeletons in the department. We've got one in our office. You could put a light on it and shoot. Okay, this one's not bad. Uh, the shell's out of focus though, and you kind of need the shell. The lighting on the actual snail is quite good. It'd be better if we didn't have these artistic shadows that's one of the things that you need to watch out for when you're sh this is why you want to shoot your own references photographers are shooting photo reference so a photo looks good you're shooting photo reference so it reveals the form that doesn't always reveal good that doesn't always result in good pictures this one you've got great um, great description here but it's description of the t of the pattern not the form it's describing all this, and that's why they have this overall white lighting, is you don't get really strong shadows from it. Excellent lighting. Um, I think this one is Justin's. Justin, this is dead on. This is exactly the kind of lighting you want. Notice it's in sunlight. You've got these crisp shadows. You've got these reflections. You've got the reflection of the tape even right there. You've got the reflection of Justin right here. Um, you, you, I mean, now mind you, you don't have to have all that stuff, but here we can see the sun, you know, so it's really revealing all the form. It's excellent, excellent, excellent lighting. Same thing with this one. Really, sunlight does all your work for you. It really does. You can just see great description. You can even see down to these little tiny highlights on these little rivets. Um, you can see absolutely everything. Great, great, great reference. Same thing, although you may want to choose the other angles because they're a little more interesting from a composition point of view. Uh, this one, you're inside. The lighting is more or less from directly above. Um, it's a little out of focus. Not so good reference. This one, again, the, the shadows are kind of coming, or the light's kind of coming from behind the photographer, so you're getting all these highlights on the front of the form where they're not all that useful to you. You actually would want to see the shadows that are on the back side here. This one has some kind of crazy lighting. It's got great texture. Um, so the highlights are really revealing a lot of that texture, but they're not revealing the form all that well. Again, shoot these in sunlight. If, you, if these were shot in sunlight, they would be just fine. But as it is, they're not really working all that well. Also, don't shoot them on a clear surface because then they, they, they cast. These are reflections rather than shadows, and they look a little strange if you try and render that. Uh, again, focus, <coughs> excuse me, uh, focus and other issues. Shoot it in sunlight. Um, you're not getting any good light and shade on this one. Same things with these. These, these rabbits are unbelievably cute but they're not lit very successfully. Uh, this one, you know, all of these are lit with kind of soft overcast lighting so you're getting a soft shadow and it's not really revealing very much about the form. All it reveals is kind of the pattern of, on the rabbit, the local values. But boy, they are cute, aren't they? Um, it's like, they're almost like harp seals.
Anyway, cute overload. Okay, again, these you know are really hard to shoot through the glass like this. They're not that successful. Need to find a way around that. This one, I want to say thank you for getting a little cast model car. Even a simple little cast model car like this, you can see that the lighting is very usable. You could easily make an illustration out of this. The lighting is very descriptive. Uh, it's, it's indirect lighting, which isn't ideal, but it's strong indirect lighting, so you're still getting a sensation of a cast shadow, even if it isn't a crisp one. And you're getting good light and good description on the form in here, where you can see what planes everything is. Okay, I gotta say, I think these are Kimberly's. Kimberly, your cat gets the award for most patient cat. Um, but look at the description here. That's beautiful, beautiful lighting, and it would be very, very easy to render. Um, that's exactly what you're looking for: is that kind of texture, that kind of that kind of lighting on the form. You can see the fur. You can see, you know, everything. So very nice. This one pretty good in pretty, you're getting some areas that are blowing out up here, which is an which is not ideal because the camera was exposing for this area. But these areas that are properly exposed are pretty good. This area you're kind of losing your information. That's not ideal. This is pretty good. You know, so it's coming and going. Some of these areas you're overexposing them. The other thing I want to tell you is. I would actually discourage you guys from converting your reference to black and white. I'll explain in more detail um, in more detail when we're in class, but the quick answer is when you convert these to black and white, it's not quite so simple. Plus it's almost good practice for you guys to be rendering from rendering in black and white from color photographs. It'll help you learn to see values from color. Uh, this one's okay, but again, this one is, is the worst of the bunch because the areas in the light are blowing out, the areas in the shadow are not very revealing and are kind of, um, you know, unremarkable. Uh, this one, the only thing that's killing me on this is these cross shadows. You've got to get rid of those. Now the cat, I can understand you not being able to take the cat outside. You can take the banana outside. It won't run away. So, um, or I don't think it will. I hope it won't. But so take the banana outside and try and, you know, hold it in the light in the same angle so you don't get those weird cross shadows. Besides that, it's a beautiful photograph. Look at this great cast shadow you're getting on the uh, tabletop. Okay, this is pretty good lighting. It's a little bit blurry, but considering what you're shooting and how you're shooting it, it's quite good. I think this is the last batch of photographs. Again, a little bit blurry, but considering you're shooting underwater stuff, uh, the, actually you're getting great lighting on these things. Um, this kind of area is troublesome. That's kind of a red flag area. If you go to try and render that, it can be very hard to work with. But an area like this, where you're getting pretty good focus and good light and shade, uh, that's, that's very usable. Um, pretty good lighting. Pretty good lighting. Um, you know, if you t take a look at all these nice little cast shadows, it's not perfect because you're having some focus issues and things like that. Like these areas are getting out of focus. But the areas where it's in focus, like down here, you're really getting some nice information. So if this were entirely in focus, you'd be in business. This one, you're not getting quite as much value. And again, you've got to watch your depth of field. You've got, you're getting some areas that are out of focus. You know, areas like this that are okay, but a stronger single light source would be better. Okay, this is kind of nice. Take a look at this down here. That's gold. That's the kind of stuff that is impossible to fake. Um, so if you, you know, that's the kind of thing you want to be looking for. This is pretty good lighting. Uh, again, because this is a is a desiccated creature, it's. N I don't know if this is. Uh, excuse me. I suspect. There's a little bit of degradation going on here, um, but again, it's pretty good reference. You know, again, watch your out of focus areas. All right, so that's it, you guys. I hope that helped. Um, I don't know how long that was, probably about 20 minutes or so. Um, but I hope that helps and answers some of your reference questions. The main thing is watch that you get good lighting on the form, that you get good depth of field, and do your best from there, but if you take a look at like the, some of those earlier ones, like the uh, leaf reference, 
that's exactly the kind of thing you're looking for. So anyway, I hope that helps, and I'll be posting the uh, thing on the shadows of the spheres and the cylinders soon. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.